Linda Bart from the Bruce Company is here taking your calls at 608-270-9933. What are we looking at here? It's a cloud of white. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. It's a type of, it's an autumn blooming clematis and all season long you have all these green leaves and you're waiting for the flowers and waiting and waiting and then boom you get this huge beautiful display of fragrant white flowers that just like little little stars. It That's is awesome. huge. I don't know if you get a wider shot of this thing but it's a couple <laughs> and, feet tall. And if you plant it in your yard it, it's one of those that you can train to a trellis because it can get um, six eight feet tall in one season and wow. then yeah you, cut, you can cut it back or you can leave most of it and get it larger the second year so. And you brought a diseased pumpkin? <laughs> <laughs> we have regular pumpkins too but yes I did bring sort of a gnarly one. It's got little warts and funny funny little things growing on it so that when you carve it you, you're going to have interesting uh, interesting look to faces or whatever, whatever you choose to do. And then I also brought well asters of course that are in full bloom right now as well as pansies. Both of those are going to tolerate frost. Can't mm -hmm. imagine not happening this week that's for sure. The red flower is something called anthurium and that is a really good house plant because you, if you put it out during the summer it re-blooms very very really? easily. So I have, a, I have this at my home and it was all leaves earlier and now it's full of flowers. Yeah, beautiful flowers and then take it in. Yes, take it in during the winter. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Darlene in Sauk City. Hi, Dar Darlene. Hi, I was wondering what I can do to prevent squirrels from digging up my tulip bulbs and taking a bite out of them and leaving them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I know that that can be a problem. There is a material, I believe it's called Repelzol, but you can actually dust that onto the bulbs or um, even on, the, on top of the soil. Or there is another method where you could use something like hardware cloth or um, chicken wire that you would plant the bulbs and then put a layer of soil over the bulbs and then put this chicken wire that then will de de deter the uh, little critters that are digging. You put the chicken wire under the ground. Yes, under and, the ground. And, oh, plants, yes. and the plants will grow through it. Right. Bulbs, soil, chicken wire, and then more soil. Okay. Joyce in Baraboo. Hi, Joyce. Hello, Joyce. Go ahead with your question. Joyce wants to know how to, if she can grow a rose bush as a house plant. It's not going to work as a house plant. Well, there are those little bitty miniatures. See, there's always a plant that mm -hmm. makes me wrong, but little miniature ones can be grown as house plants if you have a really sunny south window during the winter. Otherwise, um, I also know some folks that bring some roses into their garage, um, a detached garage, and then they overwinter them there, and a friend of mine actually gets them to flower for Christmas. Can really? you believe that? Yeah. It's not reliable, but once in a while he gets flowers at Christmas time. Hmm. Okay. Mary in Rio. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi, which question? Um, my question is, I have some stargazer lilies that have been in the ground for about seven years, and they used to be really, grow really tall, like about four feet, and now they only grow maybe two and a half to three feet when they bloom. Uh, I was wondering if they ever need to be dug up and redone. That's interesting. Usually, that stargazer, they tend to be a, a shorter a variety of, of lily. So um, I'm wondering if the, the light has changed in terms of like a shade tree, if, if that's impacting it. Usually you don't have to dig and divide, but uh, this, this actually would be a decent time of year for you to do that if you want to try that. Just, and they do prefer full sun. All so right. it may be impacted by more shade coming yeah, out. Yeah, things grow and shift around. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. All right, Randy in Janesville. Hi, Randy. Hi. Hi, what's your question? My, my question is, uh, our red tomato plants in our garden are all black on the bottom, and I was wondering how we can get rid of that next year. Okay. Randy, what I would suggest is that you plant your tomatoes in a totally different part of the garden where you haven't grown tomatoes for a while because the, the inoculum from the disease that is uh, that fungus on the bottom, those bottom leaves, is just um, splashed up from the soil. So if you rotate it to a different part of the garden that hasn't grown tomatoes, you're going to be less likely to have that. And then, of course, do not re um, compost your tomato plants if they have disease on them unless you really get it heated up so it can kill all of that. Okay. Let's go to Betty in Beloit. Hi, Betty. Hi. Hi, what's your question? Oh, before I ask my question, I would just like to say I am so very glad to see you folks back on the air. I've missed you. Well, we're glad to be back. We missed you, too. <laughs> okay, thank you. My question is in regards to hibiscus. Mm -hmm. When is the best time to transplant them? Okay, Betty, is this a hibiscus that you bring in during the winter? Um, Was she gone? Oh, she, she looks like she... There, there are too many kinds of hibiscus. There, there's the hibiscus that you put out during the summer, flowers like crazy, and then it's so big that you have to 
prune it back. I don't suggest that you um, repot that in at this time of the year. Do that before you're putting it out in the spring. The other hibiscus that has great big saucer-like flowers, those are difficult to transplant. Yep. Okay. And then there's Tree of Sharon also. That So there's lots of hibiscus. <laughs> Give me a call at, at the Bruce Company, Betty. Uh, all right. We are out of time. Stay on the line if you're there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, very all right. good. We'll be right back with the final check your forecast.